To launch the Windows 10 calculator, click on Start, search for Calculator in your Apps list, or the click on Search here and start by typing Calculator. When you see the app, click on it to open it. Now, a couple of quick things. The calculator, you can resize this window to any size that you want. You can even take it to full screen if you prefer that, or just a window any size that you decide that you need. Now, in standard mode only, you have this little icon right here, which is Keep on Top. When you click on that, it puts the basic calculator functions in the top right corner of your screen, and any program you have open, this will stay on top, which is really handy if you're working in a document and you don't want to keep switching between your applications. This goes way beyond your standard calculator. Your navigation button, which is these three lines in the top left corner here, has various other modes like scientific mode, and that allows you to do things like modulo, exponents, trigonometric degrees, sine, cosine, tangent. Next up is graphing mode, which was introduced to Windows 10 version 2004. Really great for helping students that are starting to explore linear algebra. But the standard user, like myself, will never use this feature of the calculator. In programmer mode, really handy if you are a programmer and you want to switch between binary, decimal, hexadecimal, and octal. So handy for things like that. Date calculations. This is a great thing if you want to calculate the value between two specific dates. Say, for example, you want to know how many days from now until Christmas, 11 months, one week, two days, or 343 days, or if you want to calculate the dates from January 1st, year zero till now, or basically any date calculation range you can do. In the converter, we have so many features, and this is where I use it a lot. First up, we have currency. Currency will automatically go online and update the current values of the different currencies. So, for example, if we are in, uh, converting between Canadian dollars, which is where I am, say we have one Canadian dollar, which will give us 65, Euro, 65 cents in euro based on the date and time right now. Or if we want to convert that to US dollars, we get 79 cents per Canadian dollar. So if you're doing currency, really great. Volume, I use this a lot because my hobby is cooking and I have a lot of recipes where things are measured in teaspoons, tablespoons or quarts or pints or wherever the recipe is from depending on their decimal values or metric values. I can easily come in here and say I want one cup in milliliters or I can say I want one teaspoon in milliliters or one teaspoon in tablespoons, so on and so forth. So really, really good for converting measurements in recipes. Next up, we have lengths. So whether you want to convert between kilometers and meters or centimeters, so one kilometer will give us 100,000 centimeters, or if you want to convert between uh, kilometers and miles, you can certainly do that, or even nautical miles, whichever one you're looking up. Next up, we have weight and mass. Weight and mass is also handy when you're working in recipes, such as I do, because a lot of recipes will give you something, say, two ounces, and I don't really work in ounces. I prefer working in grams, so I convert everything to the values that I use. Then we switch over to temperatures where we can convert between Fahrenheit and Celsius. So, for example, if they tell you today is 70 degrees Fahrenheit, you know it's 21 degrees Celsius. Energy, not many people will use this because you can do joules, kilojoules, food calories if you're counting those and convert between the different formats. Area, again, another thing that People who are in the construction industry might use this to convert between square kilometers, square miles, so on and so forth. Next up, we have speed. If you're looking at miles per hour and you want to convert it into kilometers, or you want to go from kilometers per hour into miles per hour, or even meters per second, you can certainly switch between those. Time, one hour, 60 minutes, or if you want to go one day is 1,440 minutes and various calculations along those timelines. Power, I'm not sure how many people would really use this. I know I don't use it very much, but it, if you have a use for it, power could certainly suit your needs there. Data, now one thing about data which actually bugs me is all the values in here. 
One gigabyte, for example, they tell you is a thousand megabytes. And that is true if you're working in decimal. But the typical computer user would work in binary, whereas one gigabyte would be a thousand and twenty four megabytes. So I'm not a big fan of this one just for that particular reason. But you do have the option of switching back and forth between here. So if you want to go, for example, one terabyte will give you a million megabytes or 198 DVDs. Pressure, again, for people that are working in the weather industry, this might be really handy. But for myself, I honestly, I have no idea what half of this stuff means when you're dealing with pressure. Same thing with angle. If you're looking at angles, you can go from degrees to radians to gradients, back and forth between the different formats. So as you can see, Windows 10 calculator has a lot more to it than your basic standard calculations that the average person would use.